can solve for them. In short, who are they? Knowing the answers to these questions will help you build a brand that resonates well with your chosen audience. Remember, don't be afraid to be specific. It might seem counterintuitive to narrow down your audience, but the more specific you are, the better your audience will resonate with your messaging. And if your brand resonates well, your customers will likely build a strong, long-lasting relationship with your business. If you already have a business, use your existing customers to build this persona. Send out short customer surveys or go to social media to gather information about what kind of people your customers are. But if you don't have a business yet, a helpful approach is to create buyer personas. These are fictional characters you create in order to bring your target audience to life. It's much easier to understand the wants and needs of, let's say, 19-year-old Mark de Krakow who spends too much time on TikTok and loves Ariana Grande than of a mysterious, unnamed Gen Zer. When you build your buyer personas, ultimately the information you need is answers to questions like what problem is my brand solving for my customers, what are my customers' main motivations, and what makes them connect with my brand. You build a buyer persona from a list of possible attributes and characteristics. These characteristics can be grouped into two large categories. The first category is demographics. This category is about who your customer who is, is include details like gender, gender age, age location, 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 education location. level, or relationship status. Relationship status. Obviously, you don't have to focus on all of these. Choose the ones that matter the most to your niche. Are you selling t-shirts to graphic designers? In that case, your customer's occupation is important and should be included. But other details like their relationship status aren't that relevant. Whereas if you're selling to newly married couples, in that case, their occupation matters less to you than their relationship status. These details go hand in hand with the second category, psychographics. If demographics is the answer to the question of who buys, then psychographics answers the question of why they buy. This category encompasses things like interests, attitudes, beliefs, hobbies, and habits. Put these two together and you've got a persona. A well-crafted buyer persona could include a photograph, so visualizing the persona the most to your niche. Are you selling t-shirts to graphic designers? In that case, your customer's occupation is important and should be included. But other details like their relationship status aren't that relevant. Whereas if you're selling to newly married couples, in that case, their occupation matters less to you than their relationship status. These details go hand in hand with the second category, psychographics. If demographics is the answer to the question of who buys, then psychographics answers the question of why they buy. This category encompasses things like interests, attitudes, beliefs, hobbies, and habits. Put these two together and you've got a persona. A well-crafted buyer persona could include a photograph, so visualizing the persona will make them feel more realistic, a short bio, like the photo, this will help you define the character better, then necessary demographics, gender, income, relationship status, whatever is relevant to your brand, and personality characteristics. So is your customer outgoing or a more bookish type? Are they ambitious workaholics or do they put family first? Where do they feel comfortable and what problems can you solve for them? And ultimately, goals. So what does your ideal customer want? How can you help them achieve their goals? Remember, include whatever is relevant to your business or industry. And don't just stop at one persona. Usually businesses create at least two or three. With the information you'll get from creating several buyer personas, you'll be able to craft an advertising strategy and a brand voice that will resonate with your target audience. Find the right channels to communicate with your audience because you'll know where they spend the most time. Identify your direct competitors easily and perfect your product to fit the needs of your audience because you'll know what they want. Now that we know how to pinpoint our target audience, we can move on to the next step, figuring out what our competition is doing. Mm-hmm. what kind of people your customers are. But if you don't have a business yet, a helpful approach is to create buyer personas. These are fictional characters you create in order to bring your target audience to life. It's much easier to understand the wants and needs of, let's say, 19-year-old Mark de Krakow, who spends too much time on TikTok and loves Ariana Grande, than of a mysterious, unnamed Gen Zer. When you build your buyer personas, ultimately the information you need is answers to questions like what problem is my brand solving for my customers, what are my customers' main motivations, and what makes them connect with my brand. You build a buyer persona from a list of possible attributes and characteristics. These characteristics can be grouped into two large categories. The first category is demographics. This category is about who your customer 
is. Include details like gender, or age, location, occupation, educational level, or relationship status. Obviously, you don't have to focus on all of these. Choose the ones that matter the most to your niche. Are you selling t-shirts to graphic designers? In that case, your customer's occupation is important and should be included. But other details like their relationship status aren't that relevant. Whereas if you're selling to newly married couples, in that case, their occupation matters less to you than their relationship status. These details go hand in hand with the second category, psychographics. If demographics is the answer to the I question, she said who personal buys, then psychographics answers the question of why they buy. This category encompasses things Shit. like interests, attitudes, it's more beliefs, uh, goals and motivations. And Put these two together, and that's the one I have to do. A well-crafted buyer persona could include a photograph, so visualizing the persona will make them feel more realistic a short bio like the photo this will help you define the character better then necessary demographics gender income relationship status whatever is relevant to your brand and personality characteristics so is your customer out i got one wrong but it's all right. are they ambitious workaholics it's all right i still passed oh We want to build a brand that customers will choose over our competitors. In order to rise above the competition, we first need to have a look at what the competition is doing. Knowing the strong points and the weak points of your competitors will come in handy. When you see your competitors doing something right, think about whether you can incorporate that into your own business. And when you see them doing something wrong, see if you can turn their weakness into your strengths. So how do we begin? Start by figuring out who is doing similar things as you are. Do a simple Google search and look for businesses that focus on a similar product as you and market to an audience that is in broad strokes similar to yours. These are your direct competitors. Keep them in mind and check up on their progress every once in a while. You can, for example, create a spam email account and subscribe to their newsletters. Check those emails once a week to see what they're up to. And don't just look at businesses that are the same size as yours. It's good to have a mix of different competitors so you can see what the market leaders are doing too. Sometimes the most valuable things are very simple. You don't need to use crazy surveillance tech to find out information about your competitors. You can just use what is publicly available. Imagine you're a potential customer and go through their website and social media. Think about the steps of creating a brand and try to imagine what their brand creation process was like. What are their underlying values? If the brand was a person, how would they describe it? How do they communicate their brand story and brand identity? How are they setting themselves apart? Are they positioning themselves as a more luxurious brand? Or are they focusing on cheap prices? If you do this analysis with several stores, you'll have a clearer idea of what you need to do in order to stand out from the crowd. When you check their social media, look at what channels they're using and how they present themselves. Are they business-like and serious or more down-to-earth? So what are their customers saying? This step will help you understand what your target audience wants and what frustrates them. How are they setting themselves apart? Are they positioning themselves as a more luxurious brand? Or are they focusing on cheap prices? If you do this analysis with several stores, you'll have a clearer idea of what you need to do in order to stand out from the crowd. When you check their social media, look at what channels they're using and how they present themselves. Are they business-like and serious or more down-to-earth? So what are their customers saying? This step will help you understand what your target audience wants and what frustrates them.
need to have a voice that stands out. Your brand doesn't necessarily need to be completely unique. It needs to be distinct and recognizable. Think of your brand as a unique person. I know, it's easier said than done. The desire to stand out often confuses brand messaging, so you should approach this step carefully. Your brand's visual identity will play an important role in making your brand distinct, but you shouldn't leave your logo to do the heavy lifting. In fact, the visual aspect of your brand will only work if you've set the foundation well. Most of the iconic logos we know today took some time to become recognizable. The famous Nike swoosh first appeared in 1972, that's 50 years ago. So instead of spending too much time on your logo, here's what you can do. If you already have a business with customers, don't be afraid to ask them what they associate with your brand. Or, if you're just starting out and don't have any customers yet, you can always turn to your social following. They can help just as well. Don't make them fill out long surveys, but a short questionnaire will do. Even if you only ask them to describe your brand in three words, that'll be a big help. You can also use what you learned during your competitor analysis. Is there something that a lot of them are doing that you could do differently? So use your knowledge of your competitors to differentiate yourself. One of the most important important aspects of creating a brand is consistency. We'll return to this point time and time again in this course. Being consistent in your visual identity, communication style, and values will go along Being consistent and be honest. Be being consistent and be honest. Yeah. Remember the Nike Thank speech. you. Thank you. Be consistent and honest and listen to your customers. Right. Right. The more consistent you are in your identity and messaging, the easier it is for the customer to navigate your business, which in turn will build trust for your brand. There's a reason that trust. people often flock to McDonald's or Starbucks when they visit a new city. It's familiar. There's a sense of safety that comes with the familiar. Your brand needs to evoke a feeling of safety and trust. This goes hand in hand with consistency. When you make promises about your brand, you need to make sure that those promises are rooted in reality. If we go back to our earlier point that a brand is much like a human being in the sense that it has a personality, then it becomes clearer why your brand needs authenticity. When you're looking to create new relationships with people, you would prefer somebody who is honest and trustworthy rather than someone who makes empty promises. This is especially true if you're marketing towards a younger audience. Research shows that 90% of millennials would choose a real and organic brand over perfect and packaged. Similarly, 82% of Gen Zers trust businesses that use images of real customers in their marketing materials. So encourage your customers to leave reviews, make use of user-generated content, and don't try to hide negative comments. The goal is to be real and transparent with the customers. That's how you'll earn their trust. To McDonald's or Starbucks when they visit a new city. It's familiar. There's a sense of safety that comes with the familiar. Your brand needs to evoke a feeling of safety and trust. This goes hand in hand mm. with consistency. Mm. When you make mm. promises about your brand, mm. you need to make sure that those mm. promises are rooted mm. in reality. Mm. If we go back to our earlier point that a brand mm. is much like a human mm. being in the sense that it has a personality, then it becomes clearer why your brand needs authenticity. When you're looking to create new relationships with people, you would prefer somebody who is 